Thanks Tassos, and great to see some of the new features in Cognos Analytics, including forecasting. But what happens if you'd like to extend your predictive analytics capabilities, or indeed supplement Cognos Powerful, as you've just seen in terms of the descriptive and diagnostic analytics for analysis and exploration. So what happened? Why did it happen? And obviously Tassos has shown you some of the AI infused exploration on this. But if you're interested in what could happen next and why, so that you can start bringing some of that change to the organization, you're looking at predictive analytics and you may want to extend this in terms of planning or even prescriptive analytics where you should be thinking about what you should be doing and optimizing. But what I'd like to talk to you today is about the change for tomorrow, incorporating predictive analytics using Watson Studio and combining that with Cognos Analytics. So what is Watson Studio? Uh, Watson Studio is a platform which IBM has developed to help you utilize your data science capabilities within your organization. It has often been said that one of the greatest difficulties around data science is actually around deployment. So whilst you may have some data scientists developing some very good predictive models, how do you actually deploy those and bring those into the organization? And this is really where IBM Watson Studio comes into its own by centralizing some of that data analysis and prediction tasks but more importantly, perhaps accelerating that time to insight prediction. So making those um, predictive models more readily available and deployable within your organization. In terms of scope, um, it does include Jupyter Notebooks, our studio, but also includes SPSS Modeler, which some of you may be familiar with. And of, obviously, of course, in terms of extending that for decision optimization and perhaps some of the data refinery aspects. But we also include Auto AI within Watson Studio. And this is a technique for using the power of Watson Studio with some AI capabilities to take your data, develop a series of predictive models, and then rank those based on the criteria. So it might be, for example, which is the most accurate model on that. But more importantly, it also provides the feedback so that you understand how those decisions have been made. And that can then be used to deploy to what's machine learning, where you would deploy them to the organization. But we're not forgetting SPSS Modeler. Um, for those of you who are familiar with that, very much more around a GUI interface. So you may have seen in the Auto AI screenshot how it shows the steps that it goes through. SPSS Modeler uses a GUI interface that you can actually develop the streams for yourselves without having, for example, R or Python or other coding knowledge to be able to do that. But it's also worthwhile considering the economic impact of using SPSS Forrester. I developed a study um, a few years ago now, but it's still very, very true in terms of some of the major benefits you get from deploying, in this case, SPSS Modeler, um, the return on investment is amazing, 480% on that. So predictive analytics, if you're not looking at it in your organization, I would suggest it should be considered very quickly. So without further ado, let's go into a demonstration. So I'm going to be using IBM Cloud Pack for Data, uh, which is an analytics platform incorporating several elements of IBM's analytics offerings. Uh, Will will be talking a little bit more about Cloud Pack for Data in his presentation immediately after mine. But I'm going to use it because it integrates some of those components I've mentioned already in a very, very neat way. So you can see that IBM Cloud Pack for Data is geared around the idea of projects. So a project is you deciding that you want to look at a particular uh, initiative, particular consideration. So I've got a project to open here, uh, and I'm looking at customer attrition for a particular utility organization. So I've got um, a description of that, and projects will then use assets. So assets can be used across multiple projects, but for this particular project, I've got some data assets, which I'm using. As it happens, it's CSV files, 
but absolutely there's no reason why you couldn't add to your particular project a connection to an underlying data source. And again, this is where the Cloud Path for Data platform really comes into its own in terms of helping you, whether it's data virtualization or whether it's actually extracting the data and bringing it into the platform. So you can actually create these connections, but I've got a series of data assets on here. Um, I talked about SPSS modeler being one of the ways that you can use predictive models. And so you can see here, I've actually just got a very simple model based on this particular data set that I've got. So those of you who are familiar with SPSS Modeler will recognize this stream uh, where we start on the left hand side with some data. We may want to examine that data, look at that data, and then we actually prepare the data. And what I mean by prepare is based on the data which is available, we will want to predict something. In this case, is a customer likely to leave the organization? So we're looking at attrition on here. So within the data type, element on there we'll do that and then from there we would actually probably partition the data so use some of the data to train the model and then we may use some of the data to actually test that trained model once it's been built and so on here you can see that we then build the model and we're using one of the auto clusters on here which will run a series of models on that so the SPSS modeler streams within uh, Watson Studio are very very similar to those of you who perhaps have used uh, SPSS in a desktop version. But if I just go back to my project, uh, we talked a little bit about the assets that you may have available to you, but you may have expertise in the organization that, for example, works with Jupyter Notebooks. So you may have R skills or Python skills, for example, in the organization who are able to develop these sorts of models. For those of you not familiar with um, these types of coding, uh, I'm actually using Python here and it, it relies on a series of libraries which you will import and then you work with the data and develop whether it be uh, just uh, bringing the data through or visualizing the data um, in terms of looking at things like a correlation matrix on here. So what are the what are the factors which are most closely correlated on here? So the darker the color, the more sorry, the darker the red, the more highly correlated the data elements are. Whereas something in a particular dark blue color means there is actually an inverse correlation. So you know this correlation uh, is not direct there at all. So from here, um, I can use the notebook to actually develop uh, various different visualizations. Now, you may be looking at some of the visualizations I've got on the screen, for example, and saying, well, those could be developed in Cognos. Absolutely, they could. Things like the correlation matrix are slightly more difficult. But because of the fact in Python you're using these libraries, um, you can actually bring some statistical functions to bear on those. So you can start developing these machine learning models. So that might be in terms of splitting the data. And as you can see here, we're going to be using 60% of the data for training, 20% for validation, and 20% for testing. So all within the Python notebook, we're actually um, working through the data and then we're actually coming up with some predictive models. So you can see on here, uh, based on the work that's been done within the notebook, uh, I've actually developed an ROC key, uh, curve, a receiver operator characteristic graph, which really gives me a view on how close the predictions are to what actually happened. Because obviously when you're building a predictive model, you're building it based on a series of known facts and then applying data where you don't know the outcome. And you obviously want those results to be as close as possible to what actually happened. So in terms of what we're looking at here, uh, we understand uh, which of our customers have left. So looking at attrition, and from that, we're then working out, are there patterns in the data which indicate that somebody is more or less likely to leave? Once we've built the model, we can then bring in some new data, but with the same characteristics as the data on which we built the model, and that can then 
help us to understand is somebody more or less likely to leave the organization. So what we're doing here is, is building these statistical models using a notebook, using Python coding. And you can see on here, we've ended up with a, a confusion matrix, which gives us an idea of, of how good the models are going to be on here. So on this, obviously you can start seeing that I'm using a lot of statistical techniques to bring the data together and understand the patterns building that predictive analytics model. So this is where you may have data scientists who can take the data and actually incorporate that into these types of models and come up with some results. But not all of your users will necessarily be data scientists. So if I return back to my, my project, um, I've looked at notebooks very, very quickly. I'll just show you the auto AI experiment. And in one respect, this is very similar to the SPSS modeler flow. So we had a set of data. In this case, we had data which told us which customers had left and which hadn't, i.e. attrition. And then Auto AI has read that data, split it all up, and then has actually run several models against that data to try and work out which is the most accurate in terms of predicting whether somebody's going to leave or not. So you can see the algorithm that's being used, and it's actually suggesting uh, that what we call pipeline two, so the second model that it ran through, has given us the most accurate results so far. So auto AI, again, is another way that non-statisticians can actually start using some predictive analytics. One important factor to bear in mind is make sure you're understanding the data you're using and the results which are being produced on this. But obviously that applies to any predictive analytics project that you're undertaking. So touch a little bit in terms of the, the assets we've got, uh, the fact that you can use Jupyter Notebooks within Watson Studio, um, you can use SPSS Modeler Flows, or even use the Auto AI. But within the Cloud Pack for Data environment, we can then take those results and we can actually build a Cognos dashboard. So based on the results from those predictive models, you can actually then do some dashboard work in this case. So you can see on here, what I've actually got is some um, standard um, Cognos functionality, um, some of which Tassos touched on in his presentation earlier. And I've just built a very simple dashboard here to show energy usage by city. Um, I'm also looking at which gender uh, uses wind energy more than the other gender. Um, we have only two genders in this particular data set we have, but also how many people are on each tariff. So standard Cognos dashboarding um, on there. But the second tab I've got in here is the predictions. And this is much more of a, a tabular view at this stage. And I've just got some customer IDs. And for some people, we know whether we know information about those customers or not. So the scene means we know information about those customers. Um, where it's got unseen and no value in the actual, it means this is a customer that we actually want to predict whether they're going to leave the organization or not. So you can see here, just looking at line two, for example, it's actually predicting this um, customer is going to leave and in actual fact, they did leave. So what it's done here is taken the information and then translated it into a prediction of whether that customer is likely to leave or not. So we've taken the results from the predictive models, which we've done, and then use the results within Cognos Analytics. So I mentioned this is all within the Cloud Pack for Data Analytics platform. And obviously any project around analytics, whether it's Cognos looking at descriptive analytics, or whether it's planning analytics looking at planning, or whether as we've just seen, it's taking some of the predictive components and using Watson Studio, all of those rely on data and good data and understanding the data, governed data. So I'd now like to hand over to Will, who's going to take you through uh, Cloud Pack for Data in a little bit more detail, 
and more specifically talk about uh, what's a knowledge catalog and how you can help to understand the data you are using in these projects. Thank you very much.